everyone! Hi! Um, it's me again, and today I wanted to, to show you uh, about this paper that I found in my drawer, actually. Um, so, this is actually um, standard weight cartridge paper with a smooth texture for pencil and color markers from Hilroy. Let me see if I can... So that's what it looks like. And so I discovered this sitting in my drawer today, and I thought I would test it out and see if it could match the Midori paper. So this is my uh, Midori insert, and I only had the one that came with the notebook because I thought it's too expensive and I won't be able to um, buy this very much. So here, let me... I have to cover something in here, though. Uh, so I did a small watercolor sketch in the Midori notebook, and I realized that there is no bleed through whatsoever. It's very good paper. It's a little bit buckling, but it's not too bad. Um, and this actually is a, a part of the Midori notebook. So that's the Traveler's Notebook that it came with that. And then so I tested out this heavy wash of watercolor. This is four layers. And this also has about three, four layers at the darker portions. And this one has about two, three layers as well. And there's fountain pen, water everywhere, and glittery powder everywhere. But if you look at the this side, there's no bleed through whatsoever. And there's not even much shadowing either. So I'm really impressed with this paper from the original uh, notebook. However, uh, I tried to see if at home I could find something similar that I could make. Uh, I could make this somehow. And then I find this paper, and it's a sketch paper, so I thought mm, probably won't take watercolor or anything. But really, to my surprise, uh, on this other side, you can't see anything. Even here, this is where I laid the heavy wash over here. It's a very heavy wash. However, you cannot even see that on the other side. There is nothing showing through. And I've tried the fountain pen, and this is actually a blotch of fountain pen ink. I just took my Lamy Safari, and I went over that square a few times to get it all um, filled. But on this side, there's some shadowing, but there's no bleed through at all. So I'm really impressed with this paper. Um, and comparing the thickness of the two papers, uh, this one's much thicker than Midori. However, this pad also comes with um, 30 sheets, and if you look at the size of it, I put my Midori in here. It just about fits this size, and I think I'll be able to make a few inserts out of this paper, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So before we make the insert, I thought I would show you what it feels like to be painting on this paper, and also showing you my handy watercolor palette that I made, also some DIY videos that I found on YouTube. Um, it's made from an eyeshadow box and contains some tube, Winsor & Newton uh, watercolors that I squeeze into it. So the first color is cadmium yellow hue. The next one is uh, cadmium red hue. The reason they're named hues is because they're made of synthetic uh, pigments rather than the professional mineral pigments from actual minerals because these are the cotton student grade paints rather than the professional grade. Uh, these are a lot cheaper and more affordable if you're a beginner. This is cerulean blue that I just painted down. Um, this one is Payne's Grey. It's a very convenient color to use if you wanted to darken your values and you can add it, mix it to other paints that you have on the palette as well. This is another convenient color. This is Yellow Ochre. Uh, both uh, Yellow Ochre and Payne's Grey you can sort of mix with different colors, but with my selection of three colors in my palette, the three primaries, they actually can't get... I can't get very dark colors. That's why I have them. Uh, the last convenience color is Light Red from Winsor Newton. Cotton series. I didn't know that color existed until I tried it, but I really love it. It's very good for bricks. So now I'm just mixing an orange and just mixing a lot of the different colors that I have to see uh, what selection of colors I can get using this palette. And usually when you have a limited palette like this, and it's all six colors or something in the same painting, everything will look as if it's in harmony, provided you mix the paint uh, for the most part, because they will all fit in together because they all are created from the same primary and secondary colors in the palette. This is a muted purple. This is because cadmium red is got um, a lot of yellow in it. That's why when you mix it with the blue, it actually doesn't create a beautiful purple, bright purple. It's a muted purple. 
It's good for landscapes. Um, and shadows. And the next one is a green that I mixed. So I can mix two greens. One with uh, the cadmium yellow as well as the uh, cerulean blue. And the other one is cadmium yellow with Payne's Grey, because Payne's Grey has a little bit of uh, blue tint to it. Actually, I can make two more greens with uh, replacing the yellow with the yellow ochre, which is also primarily yellow. But it, it just will get more muted as you use, as you steer away from the primary colors in your blue mix. Sorry, in your green mix. So now this is light red. Okay, I wanted to try uh, what kind of color I would get mixing the light red with the primary, I think. So I get a muted orange, a little bit deeper than using the red. And using the red and light red, I can create a very beautiful brick color for houses. Which is quite neat, I really like that. And adding the blue, it's supposed to be a gray, really. You can get a gray with those two colors. So I think despite this color palette only has six colors, it can get a range of different, you know, different colors that, by mixing it. So I'm quite happy with it. And that's it. Okay, to start making this insert, I think I'm just going to uh, not do any fancy measurements, just take my existing notebook and trace around it, and then make sure that it's squared by putting something that is squared on top of it, and double checking. Um, so I'm just going to cut it with my trusty ruler, and I'm going to put everything aside so I have some more room, I'm going to make sure I cut my table and just put this thing behind it. So, uh, now I'm just checking if things are aligned on the side. To make sure that when I cut it, it's not going to be shorter on one side. But then at the same time, I hear people say that, hmm, how should I do this? Maybe I cut this first and then I'll trim all of the edges all together so that when it's folded, it will not have the center pages stick out. Okay, so I've decided I should do that. So I'm just lining this up. Um, okay, so this is not going to be an easy cut. Oh, wow, I've had some sketches from way back then. When did I do this? I didn't notice I used these pages once before. How many pages have we used? Wow, it's so bad at figure drawing before. Seriously? Alright, so I have uh, taken the pages out and lined it up to my uh, cut, and I will just be cutting it. Just with an exacto knife, page by page. If it's sharp, it shouldn't take too long. And that's it. Cut this piece, and now I'm going to line up this edge and cut here as well, this way. Okay, so I've cut it all off. Now I've got this thing. Alright, so I am going to start folding this, but before that I will line this up and see if it's the right height. Uh, it's more or less the same. It's a tiny bit longer on the side, but that's okay. It's not a big deal, and now I'm going to fold it uh, in half, but mm, I suppose I will fold all of these in half. It's difficult to erase them after I put the book together, so I'll erase it now. Wow, everything is put together now, and the notebook is, has been bound. Uh, I stitched it together, all the pages, I folded them, and I put this cardstock paper I got from Michaels previously onto the, the top. And now I just have to cut it so that the edges line up. Okay, so I have cut everything out. Now I've got a lot of loose pieces of paper, which is no longer useful anymore, but I may keep some of them in case in case I need it. So this is the completed product. So I have finally completed this book, that I, uh, the insert that I was making. So uh, this is the Midori one, uh, the normal one that I got from my original notebook. I only have one, and I tried to replicate it with this one. And as you can see, it's quite nice. And I have stitched it together in the middle with a not waxed thread, I just used a normal thread because I don't have any waxed ones. And so I've also gotten this elastic, which uh, you, if you remember uh, when I did the unboxing, this is this just came with the notebook. This is the spare elastic. I tied it off at the end and it's just about the right length to be used to bind these two books together. So I'll put this one in here and open this one to the middle and put, put it in there. Alright, so I've got my journal uh, diary on the top, and our journal in the back. 
right. Oops. So we'll put it through this elastic. And that's it.